Blonde and Blue Eyes by Patricia Evangelista. When I was little, I wanted what many Filipino children all over the country wanted. I wanted to be blonde, blue-eyed, and white. I thought if I just wish hard enough and was good enough, I'd wake up on Christmas morning with snow outside my window and freckles across my nose. More than four centuries under Western domination that's led to you. I have 16 cousins. In a couple of years, there will be just five of us left in the Philippines. The rest will have gone abroad in search of greener pasture. It's not just an anomaly, it's a trend. The Filipino diaspora. Today, about 8 million Filipinos are scattered around the world. There are those who disapprove Filipinos who choose to live. I used to. Maybe this is a natural reaction of someone who was left behind, smiling for family pictures that get emptier with each succeeding year. Desertion, I called it. My country is a land that has perpetually fought for the freedom to be itself. Our heroes offer their life in the struggle against the Spanish, the Japanese, and the Americans. So pack up and deny that identity is tantamount in spitting on that sacrifice. Or is it? I don't think so. True, there is no denying this phenomenon aided by the fact that what was once the other side of the world is a 12-hour plane right away. But this is a borderless world where no individual can claim to be purely from where he is now. My mother is of Chinese descent, my father is a quarter Spanish, and I call myself a pure Filipino, a hybrid of sort, resulting from a combination of cultures. Each square mile anywhere in the world is made up of different ethnicities, with national identities and individual personalities. Because of this, each square mile is already a microcosm of the world. Inasmuch as this blessed spot that is England is the world, so is my neighborhood back home. Seen this way, the Filipino diaspora, or any sort of dispersal, is not as ominous as so many claim. It must be understood. I come from a tall world country, one that is still trying mightily to get back on its feet after many years of dictatorship. But we shall make it, given more time, especially now, when we have thousands of eager young minds who graduate from college every year. They have skills, they need jobs, we cannot absorb them all. A borderless world presents a bigger opportunity, yet one that is not so much abandonment but an extension of identity. Even as we take, we give back. We are the 40,000 skilled nurses who support the UK's National Health Service. We are a quarter of sea quarter of a million seafarers, man in most of the world's commercial ships. We are your software engineers in Ireland, your construction workers in the Middle East, your doctors and caregivers in North America, your musical artists in London's West End. Nationalism isn't bound by time or place. People from other nations migrate to create new nation, yet still remain essentially who they are. British society is an example of multicultural nation, a melting pot of races, regions, arts, and cultures. We are, indeed, in a borderless world. Times isn't a matter of choice, it's coming back that is. The habits of the child traveled all over the Middle Earth, but they choose to come home. We cheer in every sense of the word. We call people like this the Balik Bayans or the Returnees. Those who follow their dreams, yet choose to return and share the mature talents and good fortune. In a few years, I may take advantage of whatever opportunities come my way, but I will come home. A borderless world doesn't preclude the idea of a home. I'm a Filipino, and I always be one. It isn't about just geography. It isn't about boundaries. It's about giving back to the country that shaped me and is going to be more important to me than seeing snow outside my window on a bright Christmas morning. Mabuhay and thank you.